Okay, fantastic. So let's move on to sedimentation. Um, sedimentation itself um, of particles in the fluid has long been used to characterize particle size distribution. What I've got here is Stokes' law, which is used to determine a unknown distribution of spherical particle sizes by measuring the time required for the particles to settle a known distance in a fluid of known viscosity and density. And with this Stokes law, what you will see is I've got various different parameters. And if you know these values accurately, then you can actually determine the particle size diameter. Sedimentation can be um, either gravitational, which is one g-force, or it can be centrifugal, which is many g-force. When you are using centrifugal sedimentation, uh, you do have to use a modified version of um, Stokes' law. So basically, if you know all of these values accurately, you can derive size data. And by introducing a known traceable standard, the time scale can be calibrated to particle size and everything else can then be left as a constant. Now, there are two common sedimentation methods. Um, the two are called integral and differential. Integral is the oldest of the sedimentation methods. And um, what I've got here in, um, to, to illustrate this is I have a column, a beaker, full of particles and fluid. And you see these um, double line. Um, if you imagine you have a light source at one end of the column and a detector at the other end, the light source is traveling through the chamber, through the fluid and particles and to the detector. So if you start off with a chamber full of uh, or filled with fluid and particles, the detector beam at the bottom will pass through the fluid and measure particle concentration. The initial intensity of this source reading at the detector will be low. But as particles settle, big one settling first, smaller one settling later, the concentration of uh, this dispersion will fall and the intensity of source reaching detector will increase. The result of this analysis will give you an integral plot because the sum of all the particles smaller than a particular size is being continuously measured during the analysis. Now, there are various problems with this type of sedimentation. I won't go through all of them, but the significant ones are the conditions of the analysis are very difficult to characterize, including any change in fluid temperature. And also the chamber must be um, emptied and cleaned following each sample. So you can't run samples after samples and also you cannot run a calibration standard in between. So moving on to the second technique, which is the, 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 the main one that I'm going to be focusing on in my talk, differential centrifugal sedimentation. Um, here, the sample of particles to be analyzed is placed on top of a column of fluid at the start of the analysis. You will see that the particles will sediment. The big ones are sedimenting first. The small ones are sedimenting later. Here, the intensity of the source, uh, the signal, is high at zero time. But as particles sediment and go in front of the light source detector, we reduce the light reaching the detector. So we were simply doing a very simple light measurement, attenuation of light, um, and, and this is going to give us particle concentration. We also are using this to measure the time taken for the particles to reach the beam. By measuring the time, and provided you know the density of the particles, you can calculate the size diameter. <laughs> 